One thing that is very illogical for me is the fact that we haven't moved from the same spot that we were at 20 years ago or maybe even more, which is because of the integrity of the sport, we are not allowed as players to put any of the betting companies patches on our clo clothes while we're playing on the court. Um, and we do not get a fair share. Um, when I say fair share, I mean 50-50 at least with the tournaments that are allowed on the other hand to have the major sponsors from the betting world. So that's as simple as it gets. And for me, it's completely unacceptable. Personally, I probably would not uh, get a betting sponsor on my sleeve, but I know that probably 95 plus percent of the players would do that. And I, and I would support that. But if that's not allowed, then what we would deserve to have is the 50% of the, of the share that tournament gets from the sponsorship deals with, with betting houses. Player data and sports betting in professional tennis is an interesting conundrum because in tennis, we have matches taking place almost every single day of the year. And the way tennis is set up every point every game, every set, every match. It's very conducive to generating loads and loads of data. Um, and it's very conducive to the ever-growing sports betting market. And what we've seen in recent years, as with other sports, is the people who operate the events, who put on the games and the matches and the tournaments are taking money from sports betting companies and they're, they're putting signage up and they're letting them run ads and commercials and sponsorships. And yet, because in tennis, that money is not automatically shared on a percentage basis as a revenue percentage basis, a revenue share, not a profit share, that players in tennis are being left behind. I know that a pretty significant chunk goes to the player pension, uh, and which is something that I always support, of course, but we have to remind ourselves that you only become eligible for, for pension when you are what 50 or 55 so you you know for a player that retires when he or she is 30 35 he or she has to wait for 20 plus years to actually start receiving um, and getting the benefits from that deal and i think that um, it's obvious that that's probably one of the the biggest uh, sources of income for tennis, you know, the broadcasting rights, the TV rights and the data, uh, data and, and the betting. Um, you know, I think players are probably not either fully aware or maybe they just are not pushing enough for their fair share from the, from the betting. They are giving much more than they're receiving. They're literally receiving nothing from it and they're giving their names that are run through various betting platforms, websites, etc. So billions and billions of dollars are circulating on a weekly basis from the tennis tournaments on different levels, men and women. And players are, you know, I feel, you know, in a very underprivileged position in regards to that situation. So that's something that I feel like we need to talk about more. We need to raise the awareness of, uh, about this issue to the players, organize and structure in such a way where in this particular area, players are not benefiting at all and giving way too much of their own value into this. And the rest of the tennis ecosystem is obviously profiting from that. And we just can't allow this to happen anymore. And this is a very significant value and chunk of the money that is it, that is out there for players to um, to get a hold of. In every other sport with a guaranteed revenue share, even though an individual player may or may not be able to go do his or her own direct deal, sponsorship deal or endorsement deal with a sports betting company, he or she can take comfort that if there's a sign in their stadium where they play and it's from a sports betting company, that they are getting half of that revenue and that it is flowing eventually to their contracts and the money that they get paid because it's more money in the ecosystem. In tennis, we don't have that. So a player sees that and sees that affiliation and frankly only feels more frustration because they are explicitly banned from having a patch on their jersey, from having 
a commercial deal, from having a sponsorship or endorsement or an appearance that they can do to directly benefit from this explosion of interest in the sport and in the category. Betting is officialized, it's happening. And the betting houses are earning hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe billions from tennis. So there's, there's huge value there. And then a lots of interest sides in the tennis ecosystem are also benefiting from that through that um, uh, data, data deal. But the players are getting a shorter end of the stick and are, are getting literally crumbles or nothing almost. So that's, that's what I think the focus should be because being in the player council of ATP for you know, almost a decade, whenever we would address this subject, what would normally surface in the discussion is the integrity, right? It's like, we got to fight to make sure that our, that our game, that the sport stays clean. We got to make sure that the players are not cheating, they're not betting, they're not compromising, the, the tournament is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Which, of course, I support and agree with, but there's a kind of a, 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 a psychological game, right? That you, you focus on that and you don't really talk about the main issue here that us players need to be aware of.